Hi, I'm Christopher Hine, and today we're going to be talking about the fact that there's no such thing as a knife fight. What does that mean? All right, so today we're going to be talking about all kinds of knife stuff and what happens in knife situations. Uh, it should be a really, really fun video. Um, I like to say that there's no such thing as a knife fight, and that's a little bit of provocative language on purpose, and we're going to explain today what I mean by that, why there is no such thing as a knife fight. Uh, also, we're going to do some uh, live training for you guys. We have some super deadly Sharpie markers here, so we're going to use these guys to, to find a, make a real bloodbath out here, and then we're also going to use white t-shirts. Uh, I'm not endorsing either of these brands, by the way, but uh, so... Um, we're going to have white t-shirts and we're going to have markers. We're going to see visually where this knife strikes are going, right? And there won't be knives, there'll be markers, but we'll be seeing where the strikes are going and we'll be able to kind of judge that. So we're going to talk about a bunch of knife theory right now and then we're going to get Josh and Mai out here and we're going to talk about how uh, this actually plays out in live situations. Here we go. All right, there's no such thing as a knife fight. What does that mean? So it's provocative language on purpose. I'm not saying that there's never been situations where two people have knives and they attack each other. That has certainly happened. But it's not the same as a fist fight or a sword fight. And so when we say knife fighting, we have a tendency to draw up this idea of two people dueling like they would in a boxing match or like they might do with swords. But knives are very different for a really important reason. So a knife fight doesn't really exist. There's only kind of two people murdering each other with knives. And we're gonna talk about that. And you can see we've decked Maya and Josh out in super sweet outfits here so we can see how that plays out. Uh, we're gonna do some live training before this video is over, but first we're gonna do some theory and talk about what I mean by there's no such thing as a knife fight. So if I was fist fighting here with Maya, so we're here in a fist fight. If we are roughly the same size, every time I hit Maya, Maya can hit me back, right? So oh, we hit each other back, okay? Now, that means that we would just be pounding each other to oblivion and it would be terrible. And so that really wouldn't be a fight. The reason it's a fight is because one person can resist the shots of another. So for example, if Maya were to hit me and I were to return shot here, Maya can cover and her arm has the ability to resist my blow. So I can't hit her as hard as she hits me. Um, and the, the kind of superficial damage she would take on her arms doesn't compare to the damage that I would take on my body or on my face. So it's a fight because one person can use the ability to resist damage and deal greater damage. So we're fighting it out, we're resisting each other's what's happening, um, but we can have a resistance and an attack and it can kind of go back and forth. And so we can really have a struggle with that, okay? If I had swords with Josh, movie magic. All right, so if we're talking about a sword fight, how does a sword fight different than that, right? So if Josh had a sword and I had a sword, these weapons are long. So we got really, really long weapons here. All right, so now the same rule applies because it's just a, a rule of range that if we've got, if we're equipped roughly the same, every time I hit Josh, Josh can hit me. So this is bad, this, if we fought like that, that would just be us murdering each other. It wouldn't really be a fight, there's no way to resist that, it's just us murdering each other with swords. But because of the way the sword works, if Josh were to take a high line attack on me, and I return this shot towards Josh's head, you can see he naturally has a defense. That's because the length of this sword will take care of that. Now, because of the angles of his body that he can take, when he takes a high line attack, if I swipe at his low body, you can see I can miss his low body, right? So I can't attack his low body because I'm not long enough anymore, right? That's because he has a better geometric angle than I have. However, I can't his head because the sword can defend his head. So that means in a sword fight, Josh can really strategically place his shots so that way I can't return as powerful a blow as he returns towards me. And so instead of us just being murdering each other with swords, we can actually have a fight. One person can resist the blows of another person and we can have a struggle that goes on for a while, right? So that ability to resist is what makes the fighting happen. Now, if we had knives, then now knives, more movie magic. So knives will be different, right? So because of the rules of range, if we're equipped roughly the same, every time I'm in range to attack Josh, Josh is in range to attack me, okay? With knives, because the weapon's so short, I can't create natural opposition, right? So look, I might be able to take a superior angle, right? So I've cut Josh and Josh can't get my low line, right? Can't get my low line, but he can get my high line because nothing's stopping his arm, right? So there's no lengthy weapon in there to stop him from making a high line. So I can take nice, good angles, but the angles really don't save me from him being able to counterattack. Now, 
people who are really into knife work will, will argue that there are really good angles you can take. Those angles are super fine angles. And so while it might be possible for some elite expert to get to that uh, level, you're probably never going to, right? If you have a regular nine to five job and you're doing normal life stuff and you train martial arts on the side a little, you're probably never gonna reach this elite level. I would argue that that elite level really doesn't exist, but that's a, a little argument we could have. Um, the truth though is, in a general sense, you're not gonna be able to stop that weapon because they're, they're both short weapons, right? So we can't really have a fight. What basically just happens is I stab Josh, Josh stabs me, and this just goes on and on. I cut Josh, Josh cuts me. Now maybe we got lucky and we cut him so bad that they die first and I only get a little cut. That could happen, but that's a roll of the dice and we don't wanna look at those rolls of the dice at least as, as much as we can get away from looking at them. Okay, so now let's put together a live situation where Josh and Maya have a knife fight and we're gonna do it with markers so that way you can see what kind of damage they end up doing to each other. Um, but we're gonna see how it turns out, not how knife fighting turns out for these guys. Okay, now neither one of these guys are super master knife men and we're not trying to represent them as super knife experts, right? What we are saying is these are two people who train martial arts a lot, they spar a lot. Um, you've seen in videos they spar all the time and that's maybe a thousandth of the sparring they've done in their life, right? So, so they, they're sparring a lot. So these are active people who are used to messing around with stuff and, and disarming and all kinds of stuff like that. So we're gonna see what happens with these two. They get in a situation where they knife fight with each other. Well, that was interesting. Let's see how they actually look after that. All right, so this is what both of these guys look like after they choose to knife fight, um, or I would call mutual murder, right? So they did a mutual murdering on each other. So um, if we look at these, right? So if we look at Josh right here, okay? So plenty of stuff that might, he might've survived, okay? Lots of stuff that probably would've killed him if not in the moment later, right? Or, or caused him some life-changing um, things. So, so his rib cage ends right about here. This is all Josh. Now, if you look at this, right? So this went through, right? So, so these aren't superficial. This isn't a grazing little shot. Um, Josh is actually all scratched up because the marker actually hit him. So those were deep, right? So that was probably life-changing, if not life-ending, right? So not a whole lot on the back. There's one deep right here by his spine and one deep right here um, next to kind of where his liver would be. Um, so so th those are probably deadly shots right there, right? Um, we have lots of little bitty tiny baby defensive wounds all over. You can see this guy is in bad shape, right? So like this is going to the hospital, life's probably changed. If you look at his carotid artery here, so he's dead, right? Like this is, this is bad news. Like unlikely he's gonna get to the hospital. Well, it depends, maybe he's outside the ER. Um, but look at Maya, right? Same thing, this stuff's probably not too terrible. She's probably surviving. This stuff all probably killed her or caused her life changing injuries, right? So this is all severe stuff right in here. Really, really bad for Maya. Bicep, right? bicep okay so that means she probably lost the functionality of her arm plenty of defensive wounds trying to keep josh's knives away right okay all cuts right down here it depends if it hit the top of her, her um uh hips here might not have done bad damage it got in here to her kidneys would have been really bad right side of her body all this is bad right so this is what would happen if you chose to pull out your knife and counter someone with a knife right so unless you're some kind of super highly skilled expert that would take a lifetime maybe to acquire that skill, if you could ever get that skill. Um, two people equal ability, this is what they look like after this. So that's why I say there's no such thing as a knife fight. There's just mutual murder, right? You just do a mutual murder on each other. So if you want a mutual murder, then cool, you can, you can believe in knife fighting. Otherwise, knife fights don't exist. And so you shouldn't, shouldn't try to choose to knife fight, right? Okay, now let's see how Aikido would fare in this situation. So we're gonna see an Aikido situation where Maya's gonna try to implement the strategies of Aikido while unarmed. So she's gonna be unarmed. She was attacked by a guy with a weapon. She doesn't have a, a weapon handy. She doesn't have one on herself and she can't find one around, which is probably very unlikely, but so she's completely unarmed. And here's how she would defend herself. Aikido versus the knife uh, in that situation.
right, so here's what happened to Maya after. Now, there's a nice slash right across here. That's her rib cage. So rib cage is from here to here. Depending on how intense that was, probably wasn't a lethal shot. Seems scary, but a rib cage is right here. That's where the cut is. Probably gonna survive that, right? We got a cut here. That's uh, not bad. This is not bad. This is not bad. Okay, now this is deadly, and you can see that's a pretty heavy marker. Now, an important thing to understand when you're looking at marker stuff is, a marker, a really light trace, marks you almost as much as a heavy trace. A knife's different, right? A light trace um, just cuts you up a little bit. A deep one spills your guts out, right? This one, you can tell that's a gut spiller, right? It's, it's real heavy duty stuff right there. Now, there's a really light one right here that probably would have just barely grazed your skin because it's barely there. You can see the intensity came there and it lightened up. This one's a pretty decent shot. Hard to tell because it's not super heavy, so it could have been a good cut. This would definitely be, be, be damaging for Maya. Okay, back here, we have a cut back here. This is probably not gonna stop Maya at all. The cut back here, all bony, probably not gonna stop Maya. Now this is not gonna be fun, don't get me wrong, but she's probably gonna keep functioning. This is a little worrisome, right? Cause we're near the tricep and deltoid. So if it got deep, right here, we can see a nice deep spot. And then after this, it kind of scutters off. So it might've been a, a serious shot, maybe not a serious shot. On her arms here, we have a cut back here, again, near the tricep, a little bit scary. Um, we have a cut inside here. Anything on the inside, that's, that's bad. Now this is clearly a stab, so that's a knife coming into her arm right there. Okay, and actually we have nothing on this side. Oh, up here on the hands, we have lots of little shots. Any of this stuff's gonna be bad. Um, it, it might not cost her life, but it might cost her the functionality of her hand. Okay, on this side, this is not a terrible shot at all. This bicep shot's a little worrisome, right? So this might keep her from using her arm correctly. Um, this deltoid shot might not be too good. Um, and there's a deep spot there, which means that really came in. This is probably a nothing. This is probably a nothing, right? So, so that's, that, that's, you can see that's what Maya uh, sustained from that. And, and she was trying to get away. That's what she was trying to do. She was trying to do Aikido. So this orange marker was the Aikido shot. And here's her trying to do Aikido and that's what it looks like. Okay, so important thing to understand here, when Maya's doing the Aikido stuff, right, so she's Aikido unarmed, what is her goal? And, and I think it's really hard for people looking at modern martial arts to understand what the goal would be because the, the mindset is just, well, we got to get in there and dominate someone somehow. So how long is this going to go on? How long are you going to be doing that? Well, if someone were to attack you in that situation, you were using an Aikido strategy, you're trying to buy yourself time for one of three things, either one make a clean escape, right? So able to get in your car, drive away, able to get into your house, lock the door, able to do something in order to actually escape the attack. So that's one thing you're trying to do, buy yourself time to get away. Two, someone else to intervene, right? So someone sees it, the cops have been called, someone arrives, that's probably not high percentage there, um, but that also could be why you're buying yourself time. You can't make your escape, but you're just trying to survive as long as possible so someone can show up and help you. Or three, you get to a superior weapon platform, right? So in a modern era, what might that look like? Well, that was interesting. Let's see how she looks. Okay, so here's what it looks like after Maya and the firearm. So here to here, remember, it's probably pretty safe. It'd have to be a pretty serious shot to get in past this sternum. Um, we got a carotid up here, so this is bad news, right? So if it either gets the carotid artery or the esophagus, it's probably a uh, fight ending for her, right? We don't have anything else on her face. Um, we have a shot here, shot here, insignificant. This is probably um, an eviscerating shot, right? And you can see from here, it's heavy, right? That's a heavy shot, so this is probably gut spilling out kind of stuff. This is deadly, right? So you got your ilio ill ill artery down here. This is all bad news down here. So this is all really dangerous for Maya. So those are horrible, horrible shots. Here, your deltoid, this might maybe a fairly functional shot. Here on the back of the hand, right? If this, that knife got in too deep here, that would be a bad shot for Maya. We don't have any defensive wounds right here. This is a nothing shot. This is probably not that horrible, although we are close to the axillary artery, so that's a little bit dangerous, um, but this is mostly all rib cage stuff, right? Okay, uh, and then this is that shot we talked about earlier. On this side, defensive wounds, right? So a little scary because it's near the tricep, but it's not, this is all bony. This is all bony. These would all be fine shots. This is a little worrisome, right? So this is gonna be arterial. We're gonna have some serious bleeding. And this bicep shot, and that's grazing, so probably wasn't a very deep wound, but bicep super worrying because she loses functionality of her arm. So that was with her trying to use a pistol to defend yourself against someone coming in with a knife and just slashing like crazy. 
Okay, so those are the three ideas. When you're using the Aikido strategy, that's what you're trying to do. In Aikido, you're not trying to dominate the other guy. And this is why it's really hard to understand Aikido from a perspective where you want to fight with someone. In Aikido, we don't want to fight. We, it's already a foregone conclusion. The other person is stronger, better armed. There's more of them, whatever. They're, they're in better shape than we are. And so we can't fight with them. We just can't afford to fight with them. All right, now, what would happen if Maya tried to use jujitsu on Josh. So Maya's gonna try and use jujitsu, grappling, right? So maybe jujitsu is a bad thing to say, but we practice Japanese jujitsu here. So, so what would jujitsu or some kind, of, some kind of clinch work grappling look like when Maya tries to use that against a guy with a knife? Good job, time. Okay, so this is what it looks like after Maya tried to jujitsu Josh, right? So she tried to use armed grappling, or uh, unarmed in her case, but to deal with the knife. She tried to grapple with Josh while he's got a knife. And this is what she looks like after that, right? Okay, so these are probably superficial, all, all um, uh, rib cage protected. This one would normally be superficial, but if you look at it, uh, it's maybe hard to see on camera, but it's really deep, which means that was probably a really severe stab that might have got through her chest, right? And so that, that would be, that could be a potentially very, very dangerous. All the way to here, pretty, pretty safe stuff, right? So this is not gonna be horrible, not fun, but this will all murder her, right? So this is, this is probably all death, right? So maybe not death in the moment, she might've kept on fighting and she might've got to the hospital on time, but this is all serious traumatic injury, right? And if not, she's probably gonna uh, have some infections, all kinds of things going on, very life-threatening dangerous. So this whole area right here is deadly and you can see she's really marked up. Tons of deep stabs and you can see, maybe you can't see on the camera, but um, this is a deep marker, right? So which means he really pushed that in and the, the marker really got in. These are not superficial, right? So these are all serious all the way down here. This is the top the, the, the quads. That would be bad news, right? Her back. Look at this all cut up through here. Now these aren't this wouldn't be terrible at all, but this is where her kidney and liver exist, right? So so that that these could potentially be bad shots. This is all not not bad shots at all, right? Okay, now look very few defensive wounds, right? Uh, there's one on her finger here. Um, very few defensive wounds. There's a little one there and a little one there, but so you know she, she didn't get to defend her body with her arms at all. She took it all right here, right? And the reason for that is because uh, that clinch that Josh was able to use was a lot of times able to neutralize Maya from getting her arms where she wanted. And Maya was more worried about trying to hold Josh's body than stop Josh's arms, right? So when you switch into that jujitsu mentality, it's a different kind of animal that's going on, right? So, so I, you can look at this for yourself. I personally probably wouldn't recommend trying to grapple with someone who has a knife. Uh, and this is what Maya looks like after that. Okay, so now we're gonna see what happens if Maya were to happen to have a long weapon. What is she, what if she had a long weapon available to her, right? And so this weapon's about four times the length of Josh's knife. So what kind of advantages would she gain if she had a long weapon like a baton or was able to pick up a stick or something like that? How does that look? Time. Well, that was interesting. Let's see how she looks. All right, so this is Maya with a long weapon versus uh, Josh with the knife. All right, now up here, probably fairly superficial, right? So this is all ribcage sternum, probably pretty well protected. One here, probably still fine. Um, nothing low on Maya, right? So imagine that, a long ranging weapon protected her belly better, right? So, huh, that's interesting to think about. Okay, there's a slash coming from here to here. This is in the deltoid, but this is pretty bony. Probably would have been okay, but I mean, wouldn't have been a nice cut. Uh, up here's a little scary, but probably not terrible actually. This is bony, this is muscle, and it's not super deep here, which means the knife probably just kind of glanced across. Um, pretty basic defensive wound right here. This is deep. 
That would have not been fun to get, but she probably would have stayed functional. Bicep area, a little scary, although it starts here where the bone is and kind of comes into the bicep later. So not good, but probably not the worst thing in the world. Nothing arterial here, which is really, really nice. Okay, here, defensive wounds again. Classic defensive wounds, very, very common defensive wounds. Near the tricep, a little scary. Deep on the tricep, a little, a little worrisome, right? Um, and that's coming from up here. Um, lots of little spots and speckles in here. Um, and on the back, we have nothing, right? So imagine that, a long weapon managed to keep that away. So this is what Maya looks like after the knife, our marker, um, or I should say marker, knife, um, with Maya with a long weapon. This is how she looks. All right, let me set down my coffee cup here so we can get serious for a second. So. You need to take in the stuff you just saw and understand that was a very unscientific um, demonstration and all this stuff, you guys should be doing it for yourself. So we're not the last word on this for sure. You should be doing these kinds of drills and understand what these drills are, are showing you and teaching you personally. Um, but this is a, a, we're showing you some drills that you can try and, and kind of maybe some ways to work through things. All right, so now you see in that when someone has a superior force, right? Like a weapon or like a knife. And a knife is a superior force because uh, our body really can't resist the knife. You know, if you put yourself up to block, the knife's going to go through you and it's going to cause you damage. So we can't really resist that. When you're trying to resist a superior force, you're going to lose. Okay. So when Maya and Josh squared up and she tried to use her knife to fight his knife and there's going to be a duel, you see that just ended out bad for both of them. It was a mutual murdering, right? When Maya decided to try and use grappling arts, so she's going to use some kind of grappling to get Josh, that also turned out really, really bad for her, right? So now it's a roll of the dice. Maybe she'd get lucky and get a disarm or something, but in there she didn't, and Maya practices disarms quite a bit. Um, so it's probably most likely what's gonna happen if you try and dominate with grappling, you're probably gonna get stabbed a bunch as well, and that could be life-changing, right? Um, I think personally, and you should look at the shirts, and you should look at the video and you should decide for yourself what you think looks best. And then more than that, more importantly than that, you should be trying these drills on your own. But to me, the Aikido strategy turned out really the best. And the reason for that is because you're not trying to engage with a force that's superior to you. And that's an important thing to understand because we live in a world where it's all about dominating the other person. In Aikido, we don't want to dominate anyway. We just don't want to be injured and hurt ourselves. And you see when Maya used Aikido unarmed, the shirt had a, a look when she used Aikido armed with a pistol, and when she used Aikido armed with a, a longer weapon, uh, you could see how those all turned out, right? And she, she did better, in my opinion. She had fewer severe injuries when she was doing that. And the reason is because she wasn't trying to dominate Josh. Now, when you see that, you might say, yeah, but that's gonna go on all day. No, she's only looking for a superior weapon platform, help or true escape. That's what she's looking for. So she has no illusions that she's going to run in and dominate that guy. And we all tend to have a fantasy that we are the star of the movie. And so when we fight someone, well, of course, it's going to be uh, terrible conditions, but we're going to come through the adversity and win. In real life, people get stabbed and die all the time, right? So you can't think of yourself as the fantasy hero. You have to realize that getting out of a bad situation, is probably going to offer you the best chance for survival. Okay, so look at those, judge it for yourself. To me, the long weapon really was nice. With a pistol, it's hard to tell because could Maya have got enough rounds on Josh to stop him before she got closer to him? Likely, and, and a pistol is a long weapon, right? Um, and when she actually had a physical long weapon, you can see that she fared a little better. And the reason is because Josh is constantly flinching from something coming at him. So if she had a serious weapon, like a baton or a club or something like that, then that probably would keep Josh from being able to make as many cuts and get to her. And Josh and Maya's only trying to buy herself time. Her thought was never, I'm going to duel with the long weapon. It was simply escape. And when Maya got locked into the duel with the long weapon, we see how it turned out for both of them. So I uh, hope this shed some light on it. Practice these kinds of drills for yourself. I'm Christopher Hine. Thanks for watching. <laughs>